everyone. I'm Amelia. I'm Studio and Production Manager at ScanLab Projects. Um, as Jonathan said, we are a immersive studio in London using interpretive uses of 3D scanning technology to make things like frame rate. And my name's Matt. I'm the co-founder and one of the directors of ScanLab. Um, we're here today to present Frame Rate, which is a project that's three years in the making, and it was originally funded by Audience of the Future. Um, frame Rate offers a completely unique way of making time-lapse cinema and it uses its hypnotic imagery to bear witness to landscapes as they change over time. But it isn't just a beautiful artwork. The data that we've collected as, as part of frame rate is making a significant scientific contribution as well. We're gonna to start today by playing a little teaser of the project. Frame rates created from thousands of 3D scans, often captured every single day for over a year. Um, and the work is observing change from a perspective and on a scale that is impossible to see through the eyes of a traditional camera. The locations that we've documented have been really carefully chosen. The first were a series of locations in Norfolk, where it was natural processes that were really driving the change. So we've scanned forests as they change through the seasons. We've scanned blossoming gardens. But we've also studied locations up near Glasgow which, where humans are directly the cause of the landscapes that are changing there. We've scanned beaches where every single day with every tide, the entire landscape changes. So I'm gonna just dive into one of these scans for a second, get you guys on board with what's actually going on here. So this is a single 3D scan. This is documenting 600 meters of beach. And as we start to zoom into this data here, you can see the phenomenal level of, of information that's captured with every single one of these scans. So we're seeing individual pebbles and stones move across these landscapes. And of course, we're scanning this every day. So these data sets are alive. These data sets have time embedded in them. We can see the beautiful patterns of the sediment, sediment changing across the beach here. And we see the way that the cliff is exposed to almost daily collapse but we also see those individual pebbles and, and almost grains of sand kind of moving around on the beach there. One of the most beautiful parts of, of this project actually hasn't been us observing these images, but it's been our collaborators at the British Geological Survey who are seeing in these visuals things that they've known are happening, ideas that they've had in their brains and that they've been kind of drawing in diagrams, but they've never been able to, to visualize them before. So frame rates captured forests, it's captured beaches, it's captured gardens, construction sites, and quarries. In total, 28 locations have been scanned every day for between six and 12 months. Um, it's millions and millions and millions of photographs and data points, and our first data set is, is currently under peer review with, with Nature at the moment. But from a ScanLab point of view, these aren't just data sets, these are artworks. Framerate invites our audiences to observe in another way. 
We ask people to think and feel on another time scale. Think on geological time, on tidal time, and on seasonal time. I guess we're trying to get people to contemplate change, but also the pace of change. So we were honored to show the first images of the Framerate project at the COP26 Environment Conference in Glasgow last year. The work's since been on show at South by Southwest, at the Venice Biennale, and at the London Film Festival. Um, and it manifests at the moment as a room scale immersive experience. So a series of screens, you can't see that one particularly well, but a series of screens are arranged above, below, and around the audience members. And they act as portals onto these landscapes that evolve over time. And our audiences take off their shoes, they lie down, they sit down, they walk around and explore these screens. And it's been a, a place, I guess, for kind of collective bearing witness. And people have said some lovely things about the piece. A haunting installation that provides high fidelity evidence of humanity's impact on our fragile world. So for us, frame rates are all about reflecting on our relationship with the planet we inhabit. And it's important for us to have that reflection be manifest both in the process of making the work and in the intention of the artwork we actually present. And it's meant so much to us that audience of the future have really supported and believed in this aspect of the project. So their support has allowed us to do some really key work on our sustainability as a studio, but also on the sustainability of frame rate as a project. So we're reflecting on how we're making choices, on how we're recording our decisions, how we're shifting our mindset about sustainability, and ultimately how we're lowering our impact. We are still at the start of our sustainability journey. Um, we've committed to halving our carbon emissions by 2030 and to reaching net zero as soon as possible. Um, we're taking environmental impact into account when we make any decision, and we're monitoring and reducing our report. Uh, we're running our progress and trying to report on that progress as much as possible. Um, we've re recently published our first full studio sustainability policy and our first impact report, plus case studies on the process of making frame rate and the process of showing frame rate as well. We're going to be publishing a new impact report every year and new case studies as well. Alongside these, we've, we're making custom tools to try and monitor our impact and reduce it. And that's a custom EMS and an SDTT, Sustainable Decision Tracking Tool, which I'll talk about in more detail in a sec. So we've got our EMS, our Emissions Monitoring System, which is the backbone of our sustainability policy and progress. So this tracks all our emissions generating activity, and it allows us to look at that activity on a project by project basis so that we understand the impact of a specific piece of work as well as on the studio as a whole. You might have seen an EMS before, but you're less likely to have seen this, our sustainable decision tracking tool. So what this does is it um, helps us to make better decisions as a studio by measuring the high, medium, and low impact alternative for every choice we make. So we look at those alternatives, we look at the cost of each alternative, and that means that even if the low impact option doesn't exist yet, or isn't really available or attainable for us as a small studio, we've done the research, we've done the development, and we know that we can make that better choice in the future when we're able to. And here's where that's got us so far. Um, so we measure, as you can see, our carbon footprint, our carbon intensity per employee, and our carbon intensity per 1,000 pounds of turnover. We use those additional measures, measures to try and give us a better perspective on our footprint as it changes and as our studio changes over time. And what you can see here is that although our carbon intensity has gone up between 2019, 20, 21, 22, our, we've managed to keep our carbon intensity per turnover at 61% of 2019-20 levels. And what that shows us is that we are managing to grow our business while still trying to be more environmentally friendly. So we're also looking into these case studies, going into more depth on, on specific projects. Our first case study is how, look, looking at how we altered our production processes between the Norfolk and the Glasgow phases of the frame rate project. This was a really ideal case study because they were similar long-term scanning projects in both locations, with the key difference that Audience of the Future support meant that we could really reduce our impact in Glasgow. So, Let's have a look at where that got us. So first, we've got the setup impact. So this is the carbon impact of getting the project going, doing our recce, getting our mounting points ready, meeting our local photographers and teaching them about scanning. So we analyzed every decision in Glasgow using the SDTT, and that saved us 30% of emissions in comparison with Norfolk. We've then got our daily run impact, which is the impact of going out scanning every day. So in Norfolk, the team traveled just over 9,000 miles, and in Glasgow, they traveled over 16,000 miles, which was obviously a huge potential source of emissions. But we were able to reduce that to almost zero by using an EV and really carefully planning the routes to minimize the miles driven. Obviously, that was more expensive, but it saved over 2,500 kilograms of CO2 EU equivalent. And those changes also helped us reduce the overall carbon emissions of the project, although obviously that's not a like-for-like -like comparison. 
We also did this. So we, to, to understand the emissions a bit better, we tried to estimate what the um, Glasgow phase of frame rate would have looked like had we used the same production processes as, as we did in Norfolk. We estimated that it would have produced over 6,000 kilograms of CO2e, which, would, which means that with our new processes, we saved 80% of the emissions that we would have produced. So I'll go through this very quickly. This is our next case study on presenting frame rate at South by Southwest, as Matt mentioned. The headline here is that taking frame rate to South by produced over 7,000 kilograms of CO2e, which was over 50% of the, of the footprint of the project and around 15% of ScanLab's total footprint for 2021-22. That's obviously quite difficult to stomach. It's quite hard to look at those numbers. Um, but if you, if you look in the context of the benefits of taking the installation, the benefits of showing frame rate, we estimate that it reached around 1,200 people, sorry, which means that our impact breaks down as just over five kilograms of CO2e per person, which is the equivalent of driving 20 miles in a petrol car. So if you look at these kinds of decisions, at those kinds of weighing up these, these problems in that, uh, from that angle, it's a, it's a little bit easier to stomach, and that's the kind of thinking that we're doing as a creative studio, balancing the drawbacks in terms of, of climate impact and the benefits of showing our work. Thanks, Amelia. Um, I mean, as you've seen, we've, we're really honestly, deeply trying to, you know, do this work as a studio at the moment. It's taking a lot of time. Um, and we, I think the first thing to acknowledge is that we're not getting all of it right at all. Um, the most important thing as we, actually is that other people get to see it, other people get to interrogate it, and other people give us feedback on it. So all of our reports and all of the bespoke tools that we've made are available on our website. We'd really love people's feedback on them. Um, and we will just end with a few more little visuals from inside Framerate.